Welcome back to the podcast, the podcast where we talk about everything going on in pop culture from Hollywood's latest hits to those sweet hidden indie gems and everything in between. I'm your host, Micah. And I am your host, Ethan. So today we're going to be talking about the DCEU. Uh, today's episode is titled DCU OK? Uh, why do you think it's titled that, Ethan? Uh, because there's just a lot of crazy stuff going on in yeah. uh, just the corporate world of DC right now. Yeah. So it's just they're going through a crisis as well. They are going through a crisis. It's a little bit different of a crisis that Marvel than Marvel's going through. It's um, it's kind of like they're running around with their head cut off, like a, and it's an interesting thing to watch because we've gone through, um, the Snyderverse and yep. all that had to entail and quite quite a crazy thing going on with that, but it just released the latest edition, maybe even the end. I think actually the Flash will be the end to the Snyderverse, but the latest installment of dc films shazam fury of the gods was released and uh we watched it we did watch it last weekend yes so i'm gonna say we're nina we need to figure out what we think about this movie uh definitely not as good as the first one okay i think we both can agree on that i'm not yeah. sure if you've even seen the first one i've seen the first one okay yeah yeah uh definitely not as good as the first one but i do still think it is one of the better dc movies Really? Yes. Okay. Okay. Because so when the first one came out, um, Shazam was actually a movie that I really, really liked. Um, Shazam is a character overall that I like. So like when it was rumored that this movie was being made, I like followed it like intensely on Instagram. I was looking at every small detail. I was like, oh, Zachary Levi's cast at this. Asher Angel's cast as Billy Bat. Like I was following this thing. And so Shazam comes out. I'm like, okay, I like it. Yeah, and I enjoyed the movie. And so, obviously, I was looking for the next one, and it was a movie. Did you not like it? I don't... Okay, because here's the thing. I will say this, and just know that this is in the movie, so spoiler alerts for everything that's about to be said. Um, we watched Skittles get thrown at a unicorn while the phrase taste the rainbow was yelled. Well, that was an like one bad part of the movie does not just I don't know if that was one bad part though. That that was one that was one bad part of the movie and it does not degrade the entire film. Okay. At, at least they didn't keep the joke going for the entire film like Thor Love and Thunder with the oh, gosh, yeah. screaming goats and the yeah. love triangle. Yeah. That's so I, that's true. It it was a one and said thing that was like you know, it happened and I was like, is this is this literally happening in this film? And it literally was happening in that film. Um Yeah. There was a lot of weird things that, that I picked up from that movie. But it, overall, it wasn't a terrible experience. I had more fun in this movie than I did with like Wonder Woman eighty four, eighty eighty four, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something uh, and a number. Wonder Woman thirty two or something. What? I was just it's a weird title. I don't know why. Oh, because it was set in eighty four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm th I don't know why that's just now clicking in my mind. <laughs> yeah, the Wonder Woman set in nineteen eighty four. Yes. Uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh I had more fun in this movie than I did with that movie. Uh yeah. I had more fun in the Suicide Squad than I did in this movie though. Okay. So that's where it kind of falls it, on the it falls in between the Suicide Squad and then like James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Yeah. And Okay. Yeah, because I don't know. Like, um, it started off pretty decent, I think. Like, the film itself started off. You got, like, the whole bridge scene, which there's a number of bridge scenes in superhero movies. I was thinking that while watching this. I was like, that's just kind of a staple point, I feel. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, a very stereotypical place to, like... Yeah. I mean, the oh no, the bridge is collapsing. We have to go save people on the bridge. Like it's and that was funny. It's, it's I super that easy. Joke yeah, yeah, yeah. Where he was like, "All right, gang, let's go now. Time to save the bridge." Cut to the bridge newscast. being collapsed. Yeah. yeah. So I liked. Yeah, I think it started off pretty good because you have him like talking to the pediatrician, which we saw in the trailer. But that whole scene was kind of fun, and then the uh, oh man, is it the Rocket of, uh, of Eternity? Their whole layer was pretty cool yeah yeah 
So there was good things about that. And I just think they were trying to balance too many storylines into one film. I don't think they had that problem in this movie, honestly. Really? I was following it pretty well. I mean, yeah, but we're, yeah, I guess you had to be paying attention pretty, <laughs> pretty well. I don't know. It's just like a lot of things were going on. Like, you had Mary wanted to go to college that I felt like could have been a central focus on that. And then you had, uh, you know, Freddie, which is weird because I feel like we focused a lot on Freddie Freeman when he is not Billy Batson or Shazam. Like, I ne- we didn't see Billy Batson a lot. It was a lot of Freddie Freeman. That is Freeman. true. In, like, school situations. Which the entire film was kind of, like, about him. Yeah. Like, he he was the one with the love interest. He was yeah. the one that got heartbroken and then got back together with the love interest. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. <laughs> and, man, it's, like, almost... You could have carried this through where Billy Batson was in Freddie Freeman's place. Like, he was the one balancing the love interest. He was the one being betrayed. He was the one Shazam. Uh, like, it could have been his arc throughout the entire thing, and it would have worked a little bit for me better. I honestly think that because this movie was, like, greenlit before the entire DC merger mm-hmm. happened, I think they were going to make more Shazam movies after this one going through each character. You think? And like exploring different, like all the different. Was that like something that leaked or just? No, like that's just what I was thinking after. Okay. This, a- after this, because, like the first one was just about Billy Batson. Yeah. And then this one was about Freddie, and yeah. him, learning to grow up basically. Yeah. And I was thinking that they were just gonna go through all the different characters. And that's the thing films. you can do that, but, I mean, I'm going there to watch, Billy Batson and Shazam. That's true. You know, and I think Asher Angel does such a good job as Billy Batson. He does, and he didn't get as much screen time as I think both of us were expecting. He did not, and so because of that, you didn't. You also didn't get to see him, um, like be like a kid. You didn't get to see him be this like immature. And so when you saw Shazam being immature, it was almost like because only Billy Batson was there for this the weight moments, yeah, like the emotional moments. Yeah, I mean, because we didn't see, like, the younger version of Shazam the entire yeah. time, or most of the time, we kind of just were looking at Zachary Levi just acting like a child the entire time, which yeah. I'm which I'm always for. I love Zachary Levi. I do, too. So, Great guy. I had a lot of fun with the movie. I, I mean, yeah, it was it was fun. Um, I think, I mean, I'm not entirely sure, but I heard something that this was, like, one of the first films, or... Uh, uh, one of the few films that villains were created specifically for the film. Like, it wasn't canon villains. Like, Oh, really? Yeah. So, like, uh, man, trying to remember those. The w- Women of Atlas or whatever. The, yeah, the Daughters of Atlas. Daughters so you had, like, Atlas. Anthea, Calypso, Hespera. Like, all of those were created specifically. I'm sure they're actual historical characters, like, in, like, the, uh, the lore of the mythology of, like, you know, all of that. Is it Greek mythology or Norse mythology? I think it's Greek. I think that's all Greek. Yeah, yeah, so I'm sure they exist in there, but they weren't canon in the comics. Like, this film created them specifically for this movie, which is... I liked Helen Mirren. I thought she was really good. Um, I don't know who that is. That was Hespera. That was the old, old Oh, one. okay. Yeah, the one that was like, holy crap, how is she... Like, if I got H- beat How up, is she still kicking? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I got seriously. beat up by, like, an old... <laughs> like, I'm just tapping out at that point. It's time for me to quit being Shazam. Um, so I thought she was good though. She did a great job acting in that movie. But it's also Helen Mirren. Which That's is true. One of the greatest actresses of all time. But, and then I also liked uh Rachel Ziegler. Ziegler, I think is that how you pronounce it. Who is Anthea? Anthea, yeah. She was she was cool. She was chill. Yeah, I mean, she played like a uh, high school teenager pretty well. And like then that small the reveal, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like the reveal, like it actually had me like, yes, like it, like it got me. I, I, I honestly didn't think she was gonna be a bad guy. Although, didn't you? I thought you leaned over to me. Oh no, that was after she was revealed. Yeah. You were like, she's gonna have a, I was a like, redemption. She's gonna Which have like a redemption arc. Either you knew it or you just you wanted it to happen. You're like, well, I, 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 need her. I think both. I, th- I feel like because they brought up like like feelings between her and Freddie. Yeah. 
I kind of was like, oh, she's going to lean into those feelings and have, like, a redemption arc. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, Which she did. She did. She did, yeah. Freddy, uh, Freddy had Riz. Freddy did have Riz. He was... <laughs> Boys crippled and still has Riz. <laughs> That's... It's not like dissing on any any person that is crippled. Yeah, no, he did. He was, he used that cane, and you know, he was not he was not limping when it came to Riz. He was not. It was pretty impressive. <laughs> um, this was a little bit darker than the other ones too, like the teacher committing suicide. Like oh yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't fully comprehend that any of those things. Like I don't fully remember that happening in the first film. I don't think they had any of like those dark moments in the first film, like at all. Yeah, this one was a lot darker. It, it was really like. dark. Which is weird because the darkness in comparison to the overly campy moments did not did not mix well. It was like teacher commits suicide, next scene, unicorn and Skittles. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, d- I didn't really think about that until like you just said that, but yeah, it, it was really you know it was kind of a tone shift in that film. But um, take the good and leave the bad. I hope we get more Shazam. I really hope so. Zachary Levi, uh, Zachary Levi is my favorite actor of all time, so I hope <laughs> we get more Zachary Levi in the DC universe. I he works well. I think with good direction, he could. It could be better. Like, either you got to tell Asher Angel, hey, boost your childlikeness for a little bit. Like, or tell Zachary Levi, lower their childlikeness. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, meet in the middle a little bit. Because you don't feel like this kid, and he doesn't feel like you. Which, they kind of reference that. They're like, you do not have the wisdom of Solomon. Like, to, to yeah, Sam and yeah. Lou, which is kind of funny. Which, I mean, I feel like it was just Asher Angel, like, kind of not acting up to par with Zachary Levi because you do. I mean Z- Zachary Levi plays that like kid like mentality super well like in everything he does like Chuck yeah. he, he's very childish in Chuck yeah uh, so you know what you're getting with him uh, at least in like the first Shazam he was super childish but he has that dramatic weight I mean American yeah, no, Underdog yeah. yeah is one of those films that kind of that was a that. depressing movie that was the depre- it was such a good movie that was a really good movie but yeah um and he was, yeah, Zach, I, I mean, Asher Angel was really deep in that movie. Like, it was, when he came, it was like this weight. It was like a kid who's just. He came? No. <laughs> no. No, he didn't. Like, when he, when he was on the scene, when he was yeah, in yes, that moment, yes. it was like, um, it was heavy. It was like a kid who watched way too much, like, depressing anime or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. That was just my takeaway. From, I, it was still a good performance. Him dying, uh, I mean, I guess Billy Batson dying again. It really got me. Like I actually like. Yeah, you had like that w- again. Back to the campiness, unbalanced with the weight in the dramatic f- moments of that film because you had like, you know, Wonder Woman with the wizard's head like <laughs> cropped on, and then next thing you know, a kid's lying dead o- on a baseball field. And well, you're like, I mean, Whoa. that was like. Across the entire film, so I'm just saying, I'm just saying there I was don't know. there was some back and forth moments. I did like what is that called a Tesla coil, like that ball that he had in his room that was like spitting out lightning. Oh yeah, and then yeah. It exploded, and then the last scene kind of referenced that again with yeah. like this big globe. Uh, yeah, so I like that. I thought that was kind of cool, kind of a cool drawback. Yes, but uh, yeah, I mean. It did not do well in box office. Uh, it debuted first weekend thirty point five million, with an over a hundred million was what it cost to make this film. So it did not do too well. Um, and the uh, Rotten Tomato score was pretty low as well. It's fifty one percent. Fifty one percent, which is so overall, it was one of the l- like least rated, like did worse than a lot of other DCU films have done which is kind of hard to do because dc has not done great in a lot of yeah areas recently what would you rate it though like w- would you rate it around the 51 percent that the critics did or would you rate it higher or, l- um, or lower i would say i'd give it a 75 around 75. that okay range i wouldn't say it's 50 i thought there was a lot that carried it and i was i was engaged for a lot of the film yeah 
there was a certain point where I was like, this is going on for a long time. I, I felt that in that film. And that usually is a sign that you didn't feel that way? I didn't feel that way at all. Oh, well. I felt I felt the pacing was great, honestly. Really? Yeah. Yeah, there was just a certain point where I was like, we've been here for a while. We've been watching this thing, and uh, we get it. We get what's going on. And I went to use the bathroom, and I missed some exposition or something, because I came back, and then uh, Hespera, no, not Hespera, the uh, other one, Lucy Lou Calypso, the one sister. The Asian sister? The Asian sister. <laughs> Uh yeah, so I came back yeah, and, and then like she, she was like was evil. She was evil. Yeah. I was like, whoa, okay. And then Helen Mirren was good. Yeah. So I missed something. I, I obviously missed something there. I didn't think to tell you honestly during like the movie. <laughs> I was just like, just to let I him shouldn't. follow and pick it up as yeah. a, as we go. I was yeah. So that was interesting. But overall, yeah, it was a good time. What would you rate it? I would rate it probably like eighty. 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 Okay. All right. And then the original Shazam, I would have rated like a 90. Like a 90? I would say, yeah. 85 to 90. I would say the original Shazam, I would give like an 80, 89 to 90 range too. But this one would probably be like a 75. Okay. 70 for me. Uh, But it was still a fun time. I still enjoyed it. I loved getting to see the Shazam characters doing their thing. Um, But yeah, it's pretty solid. So we got Shazam. That was leading up to the last of the Snyderverse installments, which will obviously be The Flash, which I'm hyped for. I'm also hyped for that. We had, uh, oh man, I always Tom Cruise came out and said that it was good. It was really good. Yes. This is what cinema is all about. So I'm pretty excited to see it. He praised, praised the director for it. So hopefully he, it's good. He brought us Top Gun this year. That's last year. Last year. Oh my gosh, time is, time is flying. flying. So yeah, he did that. He did something for us that was pretty pretty baller, and now he might have just said that Flash will be the as baller or more. Who knows? Hopefully, we get Michael Keaton back as Batman though, which I'm excited about. I'm excited about that as well. That that is pretty cool. And the the classic music, that music, the Batman music, I remember from like the Lego Batman games. Yes, with j- I like it's nostalgic for me on so many levels. I'm like, ooh, it gives me chills every single time I hear it. And the famous, I'm Batman. It's great. It's yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to, you're a Marvel fan more than you're a DC fan. Uh, yes, I am. Yeah. This is this is my arena. I do love DC. Which, things. Marvel hasn't been doing that great either. Like, yeah. DC is running around like a chicken with like their head chopped off. Mm-hmm. But Marvel's running around like a chicken that's just pooping everywhere. <laughs> like, th- like, they can't stop pooping. <laughs> they just can't stop. Uh yeah, take take with that what you will. Uh, I I would say that's pretty close to accurate. Um, but that's then that's like a farm boy reference, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, for but sure. Yeah, but I just imagine like a little kid being like, "They seems like a chicken with his head <laughs> cut off, and Marvel's like a chicken that just can't stop pooping." You know. <laughs> but then, like the DC merger, that's like basically like a new chicken being born. We got to get off the chicken train. <laughs> Any <laughs> other references? It is. It's exciting because James Gunn's doing some stuff, man. James Gunn is doing some interesting stuff with DC. So I'm excited to see what is coming next. It's like a breath of fresh air because they're taking all the stuff, which there was good in the Snyderverse. Right, there was good moments. There I don't feel like I watched a lot of the Snyderverse movies. I know you haven't even seen Man of Steel. I've not. <sighs> that is depressing. I think I saw it when it came out, but I just don't remember it. You don't. You would remember Man of Steel if you saw it. Are you sure you saw it? When did it come out? I don't even know. Twenty thirteen. Date. Twenty twelve. Something like that. Yeah. I might just not remember it, dude. Dude, I like movie wise. I did not become like conscious until like black panther or like civil war you did not become conscious like movie conscious like i like i like remember going to movies like before those mm-hmm. but i just don't think i cared about movies at that point and so i just okay. didn't that was not that long ago i like didn't engage you're gonna get like attacked by some people dude yeah probably that. that's interesting though uh yeah because i mean did you see justice league not the original i did you see the, the snack, snyder the, the snyder snack cut. M- Snack Rider. 
Uh, yeah, Zack Snyder. Um, that was a good. That was four hours. You invested a lot of time to f- for that to be something you jumped into. Yeah, I remember it like it was it was during uh I think it was like last summer that I watched it, and it was just like some random night after work, and I was so tired. Mm-hmm. But it was like not like time, like it, it was like six p.m. or something yeah. like that, and I was like I can watch a movie, and so I put on the Snyderverse. Uh, there you go, Justice League. I it was I was sick when I first watched it, and I was lying in my bed. Uh, feeling terrible, and I was like, I guess I'm just gonna watch this movie. And it kills a lot of time. It killed a lot of time. I think I watched it twice, actually. I have not watched it twice. It was good. I liked it. I but liked it. Unpopular opinion. It might not be as good as I think it is. I I don't know for sure, but the Josh Whedon Josh Whedon one was so bad. It was such a bad movie. I didn't watch it, and yeah. I'm glad I haven't. It's uh, but that is good. You haven't. But, like, I feel like that one's so bad that it just makes the Zack Snyder one even better. You yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, that's, like, the same thing with, like, the Suicide Squad yeah. movie. Like, the first one was not good at all. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's why I had such a better time. With the next one. With the next one. Just because it was, like, it was a step up. Like, it may not have been, like, a crazy step up. But I feel yeah. like just because the first one was so bad, it just feels like it was, like, four steps up. I would say that that's probably what's happened with a lot of those <laughs> movies oh. where they come out with another one or another cut or a reboot or yeah, whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they were good. There were some good things about the Snyder universe. Um, Batman v Superman gets a lot of hate. I didn't mind that movie. I thought it was good. I I haven't, like, seen the movie fully. I've seen, like, clips from it. Yeah. And the acting's not bad. Yeah, but you also have big players in that's it. That's true. You ben know, Affleck, Jesse Eisenberg as Jesse Eisenberg. Lex Luthor, which a lot of people didn't like. I did not hate it either. I thought it was a different take on Lex Luthor than we've gotten, but I thought it was enjoyable. I remember seeing a scene where I think it's Superman and Lex Luthor like mm-hmm. talking on top of a rooftop, and yeah. he, like Jesse Eisenberg played Lex Luthor pretty well. I feel like. Oh man, yeah. I'm trying to remember that s- that what he said in that scene, but yeah, that was a pretty cool scene. And the ba- the warehouse fight scene with Batman. Yeah, you show me that, and that is... I show... That's, like, my first thing. Whenever I meet somebody new, I'm like, watch this, and I just throw <laughs> <laughs> so that scene in their face, because it's just so good. It's just such a such an amazing scene. Except Batman has a gun at the end, and then he literally kills the guy. Yeah, so he's like... They did not do that very well. It's like, Batman does not kill. In that scene, I'm just saying, if I got a crate to the face and slammed up against the wall, and then he literally I sh- might die. He shot like a flamethrower on somebody's back, and he blew up. <laughs> There's no way that dude is surviving. <laughs> he literally, they threw a grenade at him, and then he tosses these two dudes in a hallway, and then throws a grenade in that hallway, and it blows up. And I'm just like, they're dead. 100%. I, I don't need to check a pulse to know that those dudes are probably all over that wall, those walls in there. So... Batman does kill in the Snyder universe. Just throwing that out there for anybody who is debating this late at night while staring at the ceiling. He does kill. He does kill. 100%. There's, yeah. But, I mean, maybe I would, too, if I was living in Gotham City and all that stuff with all those terrible people. Um, so, yeah, there's Snyderverse is coming to an end. It's a goodbye season for us, but we're getting a lot of good stuff with James Gunn, potentially. A lot of good stuff. We don't know. James Gunn, and I should say, and Peter Saffron. Those two dudes, they're the ones helming this up. Uh, They're the ones pushing for a complete reboot. A complete, we're done with whatever we had. We're starting something new. Forget it. We're going to erase everybody's memory of the Snyderverse, and this is what we're going to do moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Don't got much to add. You don't got much to add to that? No. Okay. I mean, James Gunn did a great job uh, on the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. So yeah. I feel like like if it's not an exact like tone ripoff from those movies, I feel like it'll be pretty good because I feel like the like like the Guardians of the Galaxy tone does not fit well with like Batman and like the Joker. It does not. So or Superman, which is the next film he's directing or Superman. for DC. So I just hope that those like that tone is not in every yeah. DC movie. I just imagine like uh like uh Superman opening up 
beginning image, him like getting shot out of like Krypton, and then the I'm hooked on a feeling you know, that that yeah, sound starts yeah. coming on. <laughs> it's just like we get a shot for shot remake, but with Superman now, because it's kind of the the draw. Star Lord's cast out of Earth and is now living on another, you know, other planets. Superman's cast out of Krypton now living, now living on Earth. Earth. Um. There's parallels. Just saying. I just would really hate to see that. I would hate to see that too, honestly. That would not be great. Which movies are you excited for, like, upcoming? So The Flash, Blue Beetle, Aquaman, and The Lost Kingdom, and then Joker 2. And uh, th- those are, like, the next four that are coming out yeah. in, like, the next year. Well, I mean, the Joker's Elseworld. It's not a part of the canon yeah, 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 yeah. storyline. Yeah. Are you talking about with James Gunn? I'm just talking just films? DC. So, I'm really excited for the new Superman movie, Superman Legacy, which is coming out 2025, right? Sometime it's it's kind of s- dates are still being thrown oh, out okay. there. I'm sure that sounds like an accurate time to throw out. So yeah, I I am excited for that. Um and I'm also excited for Batman Brave and the Bold. Yeah. I mean, if it's like the same type of stories being told in like the cartoon Batman Batman and the Brave and the Bold Mm -hmm. but I'm totally for it and it's got Damian Wayne which is my favorite Robin besides like Dick Grayson so it's not not uh, so it's not your favorite Robin they're they're battling it out (laughs) for top because Damian is just I think he has the coolest story in my opinion because it's like Batman's son raised by the League of Shadows and like you know, there's this draw that the one role Batman says, hey, I don't kill. And Damien's like, I don't give a frick. I'm going to kill. You know, and so, like, there's this being pulled into Batman's world. And he's just trained combatant at so many different types of s- fighting styles and all these things. So it's like, there's going to be interesting, if they go with a comic accurate depiction of who Damien is, there will be an interesting draw to see what happens with that. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I don't really know much many of like the bat or the Robin stories. Yeah. So like the one that I do know, and it's literally just because of Batman Arkham Knight, is Jason Todd, <laughs> how he yeah. just gets beat up by the Joker, and then Batman just assumes him dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So take all of your comic accuracy from the video games because they're pretty not <laughs> just like all the things you know about Batman are from the Arkham series, which are great series. Love those games. I played them so many times. Jason Todd in that game is really cool, and Jason Todd's good in the comics too. Um, like he's just a cool character. I wouldn't mind seeing him. I gotta too. read some DC comics. Yeah, I do. I need to read a lot more than I have, because if it is Damian Wayne and Brave and the Bold, that goes to show that there has to be other Robins out there, right? There has to be Nightwing. There well, has yeah. to be Damian. Uh, there has to be Jason Todd as Red Hood. So we might see them, which would be cool. Which would be cool. I would love to see Nightwing. Like, in a full live-action kind of setting. I don't know who I would cast as Nightwing. Maybe myself. Put me on that role. Just make me Nightwing. <laughs> I, could, I could do something. Uh, but I'm excited to see what they do with that. I don't know. What projects are you excited for? Uh, let me go back to... Uh, obviously, The Flash. Yes. And then the next Joker movie. I was... I don't even know how to pronounce what it's called. Joker or something. Folie et droit, I'm That's guessing. Beautiful. Folie et droit. Folie et droit. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, I loved the first one. Mm-hmm. I was so hyped for that movie. Uh, when the trailer came out, like yeah. I could not think of any, like could not think of anything else but that movie, for like the next two months a- after that trailer came out. Yeah, it was a problem. Your teachers yeah. were like, "Look, this is a math test. You can't keep putting the Joker for all your answers." Shut up. <laughs> Silence, please. <laughs> uh, I love the first one, so I'm very excited for the next one. And then just the trailer for The, the Flash blew, blew my pants off. Yeah. <laughs> blew your pants off. Uh, I loved the first Joker. Like, not even as an installment for superhero, like, films. Just a film in general was an amazing film. Yes. Like, the score, the cinematography the color grading, the acting, everything about that film was, I would say, flawless. 
and I mean, it made like a billion dollars. So obviously, other yeah. people thought so as well. So and he won an Oscar for his performance in that movie. Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin he's Phoenix. A he's a great, great actor. actor. Genius. It was an amazing film. I loved it. The yeah. Rotten Tomatoes for that movie were only sixty nine though. Sixty nine. Sixty nine. Nice. I don't trust Rotten Tomatoes all the time. Well, that's just the critics. I n- I never trust the critics on Rotten yeah. Tomatoes. But I'm just I'm just saying that the critics didn't like it too much. Which is so weird. I thought everybody loved that movie. Apparently not. That is kind of depressing. But then the audience score was eighty eight. So. It did have some big society issues going on. Yeah. So that was, you know, maybe that was why they were like, oh, we're not going to we're not going to touch on some of these topics, which could have been maybe that's why the the critics were like, eh, this is kind of a touchy film, you know. But I don't know. It's an interesting thing. Um so yeah, we have a lot of uh, projects coming out with James Gunn. We got a couple of TV shows. We got Booster Gold, Creature Commandos. Um, if you're not a super intense DC fan, some of these are going to be kind of off-the-wall characters that uh, you probably haven't heard of before. So it's kind of interesting to see what goes on with that. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what James Gunn does and Peter Saffron does uh, going forward. So, we have a couple of other touchy subjects going on, though. There's a lot of drama going on with DC. Yes. uh, Mostly around the actors in DC. Yeah. Uh, So, Henry Cavill, you want to... I I don't understand it that well. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you've heard more about it. Do you want to... I'll give a very, like, rudiment or just not too in-depth... Yeah, bare bones, kind of skim over all the drama going on. But basically, Henry Cavill or Cavill uh, was given the role of Superman. Uh, Man of Steel comes out. Uh, a lot of people like it. It, it kind of got a following. And then we get him in a couple other installments. We get his suit in Shazam, the first Shazam. It's not actually Henry Cavill. It's some other random dude. Uh but at least he's existing within the Snyderverse. That is we true. Get him yeah, in Justice yeah, yeah. League. And then all of a sudden, we get a little sneak peek from Black Adam. Hey, he's back. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, Man of Steel 2. It's all coming. Henry Cavill posts this thing on Instagram, a really heartfelt thing of, hey guys, I know it's been up and down. Thank you for sticking with me. I'm coming back as Superman. And everybody's like, let's go. Then all of a sudden, James Gunn takes the reins and is like, no, you're not Superman, and you will never be Superman ever again. And that's that's it. Henry Cav- Cavill is no longer Superman. So that's that's the story. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, obviously, I haven't seen a lot of the movies mm-hmm. with him as Superman, so I can't really. I mean, he's a good actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I feel like because there's such a following for him to be Superman, I feel yeah. like they should have kept him as Superman. And just been like, none of their stuff before happened, but he's still Superman. Like yeah, in like the, like in like the new u- in the new universe, mm-hmm. they're like, none of the stuff before is canon, but he's still Superman. They could have. I just think there would have been a confusion to that. Yeah, for maybe sure. a little bit. But like, this is a completely different Superman, but people are still gonna probably tie him back to the Snyderverse, just because that's where he originated from. That is true. So, I mean, there was ups and downs for each side of it. I get where they're coming from. Hey, fresh start. We can't have the same dude still existing, even if you did like him. Um, So he's gone. And they're going with the younger Superman is also kind of the direction they're taking with this new. Because they're they're planning out 10 years. They're like, hey, we got to make these movies expand over a long period of time. We need someone that can stick with us. Maybe even someone lesser known, so they they can be tied to these projects without a lot of things d- pulling them in different directions. So I don't know. Uh, I feel like they shouldn't have just announced like the next ten years of films. Like, yeah, I don't I know if this is the next ten. The the slate that was announced. I think this is just the projects they're working on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like. 
I'm I'm just going back to Marvel because the first couple of phases of Marvel did it so well. How mm-hmm. they just like, oh, here's a new movie. It it like does it may tie into something. Yeah. It, it may not. Uh, and then eventually it did all tie into something. And like, they didn't know that from the beginning. Like they just made Iron Man just as a sole movie, mm-hmm. and they were like, this did really well. We could do other stuff with this. And so they kind of just like kept going with the flow instead of. Here's a bunch of movies that we are making currently, and they're all going to tie together. Please like it. Yeah. Which I feel like they could have been like, here's the next two movies. See how the audience takes it, and then be like, ooh, okay. We need to like change it up a little bit, change the tone. Yeah. I, I, feel, I, mean, I feel like they just announced too much at one time. Maybe. But it's like they have to play catch up a little bit. Marvel is so ahead of the game. They're, fall- they're falling down. They're falling down, and th- that's why they're like, hey, this is our time to get in and get in strong. Um, and I think also what they have that Marvel doesn't have is Elseworld. It's the Batman, the Joker, all of these films that don't tie into the overall storyline. The like legacy ones, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, so all of these that don't tie into anything going on in their universe, which Marvel doesn't, ha- doesn't have that. They have to like somehow weave all their yeah. stories into one big narrative. And I think that's where they're faltering a lot because Marvel has a lot of characters that could just be one-off things. Yeah, for sure. But they can't do that now. Because there's that expectation of everything needs to tie together. And then when they do, yeah. And when they do, it's Sony doing their own projects. And then those eventually tie in back to the... And now, yeah, now they're tying those back because with you know No Way Home, you get... Andrew Garfield, and now Sony's like, oh, we have Andrew, we could do Spider-Man projects, but it's obviously gonna be somewhere connected to the MCU. Yeah, and then, like, with Morbius at the end, the end credit scene where he meets the Falc- uh, the Vulture. Yeah, so we don't actually use the word Morbius in this room. But it's Morbin time. <laughs> oh, gosh. Dude, that movie... It was really bad. It was... Yeah. But we're on DC. We're not... We don't need to talk yeah, about sorry, sorry. Morbius. <laughs> no, it's all good. We just... Any any excuse for me not to talk about Morbius, I'm going to jump onto that bandwagon. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's a lot of interesting things going on. We got Black Adam. That was a thing. The Rock. The Rock being The Rock. I mean, think about, like, The Rock being such a powerful spearhead in Hollywood that he thinks he could single-handedly save and control the DC with whatever film he was planning. Like... He was like, yes, Black Adam's going to be the new face of the DC and DCEU, and I'm going to be the one that controls this. I mean, I think he just has like a, like an expectation that whatever he's in is just going to do amazing. Yeah. I mean, he – this is a sports thing, but I mean, mm-hmm. the XFL, which is like the s- spring football league, yeah, was doing terrible, and then he bought it. And it's doing decently well now. So I feel like he does have that expectation of, if I hop into something, it's going to do well. And dude, if The Rock walked into here and was like, hey, this is no longer a film podcast. This podcast is going to be about making spaghetti noodles. I'd be like, okay. We are going to make yes. the best spaghetti noodles ever. Yes, sir. <laughs> right away, and right away, Mr. Rock. And we're everybody about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, he's just got that, that presence to him. He's got a gym that literally follows him around wherever he goes. Whatever movie he's working on, whether it be in France, whether it be under the ocean, that gym's going with him. Yes. And he's working out, and he's getting buff, and he's becoming more intimidating while using he's steroids. He's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, he's a scary He's a scary dude. So Black Adam, he did that. He made it. It did not do well at all. I mean, there's some people that liked it. I didn't hate I it. I didn't see it. I didn't necessarily hate it. Oh, you need to watch a lot of more DC stuff, dude. You're slacking. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like the only like DC projects that I really care about are the ones with Zachary Levi in it. <laughs> <laughs> like a little crush on Zach. Dude, I on. 100% it's a celebrity crush on Zachary Levi. All right, man. I mean, that's kind of me and John Krasinski, though. Like, any film John Krasinski's in, I'm watching it. I'm that is, that's also me, yeah. That's just that's a man right there. Dude, Zachary Levi, he's huge. Boy, is buff. Is he buff or is it padding in a suit? It's the question you gotta ask yourself. I feel like he's buff. You feel like he's? I mean, he's definitely a big dude. I he don't was, know. He wasn't that big in Chuck, but. But yeah, he did bulk up from that to yeah. like where he is now. <laughs> he definitely did. He ate some. 
some protein every single day for sure to get where he is. But there's a lot of things going on with Black Adam, getting back to that. And it was actually going back to Shazam, actually, because I want to say this. It was pretty funny. I watched a video. We kind of talked about this where he was like, hey, guys, Shazam 2 is out. Numbers were not doing well. And he was like, I want you to go watch this instead of John Wick 4. Which we did. We, we did, did do that. We did do but that. But not because of that. Not because he told us to. I just, that's just so sad. You know? I mean, you are going up against one of the most hyped up, like, action movies of the last, like, couple years. Because yeah. the third one was great. Mm-hmm. The third John Wick movie was great. And then this one is, like, super, super awaited, super hyped up. Yeah. And they release on the same weekend, I'm pretty sure. And also, a lot of people are kind of tapped out of the Snyderverse. They're like, oh, there's not many more installments of this. I, you know, Yeah, it's all and I mean, it's going to end soon. Like, yeah. who really cares? Yeah, all that. And promotion for Shazam, too, I don't feel like it was great. I didn't see, like, anything about it. Until something came out where it was like, oh, my gosh, I just threw a truck at a dragon. I love my life. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. It just was not done well. So it had a lot of things going against it, which I feel for him. I feel for, you know, if I was an actor and my movie wasn't doing well, I w- also would get on social media and beg people to go see it. Yeah. I mean, even though he got paid, he still wants to come back and do it. Do and again. if it's yeah. not doing well, then, then they're not going to. <laughs> Guys, so p- please go watch it. I really want to see Zachary Levi again. <laughs> Please go watch Do Shazam. Do not go see John Wick 4. Go see Shazam go instead of John Shazam. Wick. I want Please. to see Zachary Levi again. <laughs> he just gets like a whole following of people just going online. Please don't go see John Wick 4. Please. Which is sad because I actually really like, uh, oh man, Keanu Reeves. I also really like Keanu Reeves. He's a good dude. Yeah. Like he can make a crap movie and I would still say you're a bad person if you don't go see his movies. Yes. I would agree. We have to, pr- like, at all costs. You need to see John Wick. I've seen the first one. I know. You, you need to see two and three so we can go see four. Yeah, I do. I need to catch up. I really do. Which I, get, I just said, hey, if you don't you see, see a John Wick, <laughs> if you don't see a Con- Keanu Reeves movie, you're a bad person, which I guess I'm a bad person. Um, yeah, but, like, I, it's, like, one of those things, like, if the world were to end tomorrow, at all costs, we must save Keanu Reeves. Yes, he is the sole person that we are sending into space to <laughs> repopulate the universe. <laughs> to re- Just by himself? Yes. <laughs> to he repopulate? He like, what do I do? He will be able to do it. He's Keanu Reeves. <laughs> he just, like, produces children himself. They just, like... They're all just clones of him. Hey, they're going to be good kids, though. Yes. Only good can come from Keanu Reeves. Exactly. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, well, I just don't want to imagine anything now. <laughs> I just want... <laughs> Ugh. That was a really weird tangent that we went on. It was a little bit of a weird tangent. Uh, speaking of weird tangents, a new Hellboy's coming out. I haven't seen anyone's oh before. <laughs> <laughs> ah! No, it's like, hey, this is coming out. Great. Got to get to th- watching that. Uh, I like Hellboy. I like a lot of the Dark Horse characters, like the Mask in Hellboy. And Umbrella Academy is also con- uh, a tangent of Dark Horse comics. Like, all of those quirky little characters and so hellboy is just exactly that it's a big buff dude from hell that's a good guy apparently i will so. go see it even though i don't know anything about the character you should i don't know how much we can talk about it because you haven't seen it but it's coming out it's going to be a younger hellboy this time around which most of them have been older so and it is kind of sad because i actually love david harbour as a person great as great actor, actor great actor and i'm sad that his didn't work out you know like it, i think he said on something he had like a picture of himself as hellboy uh either in his bathroom in his like film trailer and it just basically said like uh uh it basically said like it all could be lost or something like that like it's just some way to humble himself like at any point your movie could completely get Tank. dogged on yeah and you lose everything. So that's kind of sad that he has a movie that that reminds him of that. Because I, I liked him as Hellboy. I thought he was a good Hellboy. He's a great actor. And he's a great he's actor. He's doing really good in Stranger Things. Yeah. The I don't know. The new Hellboy, 
the guy who's directing it, um, man, what is his name? Joe? No, that's not his name. Oh man, what is his name? It's some. Oh, Taylor, something Taylor. Brian Taylor. He's directing the new Hellboy. He has not directed a lot of things. I think Crank is one thing that he either wrote or directed, and then he co-directed Ghost Rider: Spirit of Vengeance. I haven't seen that either. I don't think I've seen that one. But I don't understand how these directors get picked. Especially, like, going back to Shazam. Like, obviously, Shazam didn't do terrible. But the director of Shazam, uh, David Sandberg, directed, like, a few movies, most of them horror-based. And DC's like, yes, you are going to direct our Shazam movies. We want you to do this. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. They just pick directors from genres that they think are going to do well but I, I'm not sure how horror and Shazam go together but I mean from this last one some of those creatures popping out bro I was like oh those were disgusting yeah the unicorn dude unicorn was terrifying it low key scared me I'm having nightmares about it I'm st- yeah it's it could be in this room right now and that's terrifying me just give it some skittles oh yeah just taste the rainbow yeah throw some skittles at it and it'll just be a little horsey then a exactly. little pony a little demon pony yeah it was it was interesting to see that his horror aspects twinkled in a little bit to Shazam cuz he directed Lights Out which I don't know if you've seen that I've not yeah that's a good movie I did like Lights Out Annabelle Creation also okay I'm not I a big Annabelle seen that. fan uh what's his name Brian Taylor what the director Taylor. for Oh, uh, you're talking about the Shazam director. Yeah, David Sandberg is the Shazam director. Um, Lights Out was actually one of my favorite horror films. If, like, in recent years, obviously the classics definitely hold hierarchy in place over that, but Lights Out was really good. I have not seen it. It made me afraid of the dark. Huh? Uh, I was just seeing what year it came out, 2016. Yeah, I remember watching that movie and, like, not being able to... turn the lights off for like a hot minute all right then i won't see it you probably should you probably should just i want you to have trauma in your life Ethan, and this is the way to do that okay i'll <laughs> watch it yeah just so i can go to therapy about it you gotta have reasons to go to therapy if you don't go to th- i'm not gonna say <laughs> that <laughs> if you don't go to therapy what are you doing with your life um i actually go to therapy though it helps <laughs> do like do not be scared to go to therapy I actually went, I was a, uh, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> I didn't, I, I'm actually currently going, no, I, I was a psychology major last year, so I, it's, I learned some stuff about therapy and some interesting stuff going on there, but now I can have conversations with people that s- makes me sound smarter than I am. Like this conversation. No, this is definitely, people are <laughs> questioning my <laughs> IQ <laughs> in this current moment. Micah was smart until we listened to his podcast, and now we don't want to be friends with him anymore. That's going to be the narrative. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, so that's interesting to see that uh, DC's kind of going all over the place with a lot of different things. Um, And I'm hoping that this next phase is good. Because I love DC. Batman is my favorite superhero of all time. And it will not change. He is up there for me, for sure. I always have arguments. I think Batman can defeat any superhero. Give him prep time. No. Yes. Any, okay, any canon superhero. Obviously, if Batman goes against Galactus, Galactus winning, because all he would have to do is eat the Earth, and then Batman's dead. That's true. <laughs> so. I don't know. I feel like. What? Say it. I just feel like Superman would destroy Batman. Okay, but look, given prep time, Batman could destroy Superman. We saw Batman v Superman. If Superman's mom wasn't named Martha, and also Batman's mom wasn't named Martha, Batman would have won. Okay, whatever. (laughs) Yeah, because Superman was like, Martha! And then Batman's like, why'd you say that name? (laughs) So, I'm just saying. Also, Batman did clapped the whole Justice League. He defeated the whole Justice League in a comic book series. All of them. 
I rest my case. I'm just putting, <laughs> I'm putting that out there. I think Batman is the greatest of all time, and I will die on my grave thinking that. But that's just a side. I mean, what's your favorite superhero? Favorite superhero of all time? Yeah. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> He's top five for me. He's so good. Okay, so you haven't seen a lot of DC films. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so but you've been doing most of the talking in this episode. Yeah, because, I mean, I guess we kind of picked this topic, and I'm just, I knew a lot about it. Yeah. Of DC, but what's your favorite DC film? Favorite DC film? Ooh. Uh, Canon-wise, or, like, Snyder first? Just any, any, at all. I would say either the Batman, the newest one with okay. uh, Robert Pattinson. It's a great film. Or the Joker with Joaquin okay. Phoenix. So just like all like the legacy characters. Yeah, all the Elseworld kind of installments. Yeah, I love the Batman. Such a good movie. Came out on my birthday, so it was like my little birthday film. It was great. Went and saw it opening night. and uh, Happy birthday. It. Well, it's not my birthday anymore, but thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh yeah, I'm super excited to see the next one. I think it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, but yeah, so I guess in this jumbled mess of talking about DC, we're gonna come to a close with that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully, there was some coherent thoughts in what we said. If not, we apologize. Um, it's been it's been a weird little bit at college and ending the semester and life stuff. So Just very busy, very busy. Week. Very heavy week. Yep. <laughs> 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 like crying with tears going down our eyes. Um, uh, no, but it's good. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, uh, we are both Christians. So whenever I say it's good, I always say God's in control because he is. So he's it's good and God's in control. If God's in control. If you're going whatever you're going through, just like the DCs going through a bunch right now, God's in control. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> Um, so next episode, uh, we have a couple of options, so I don't know. We can probably just talk about it right now. What do you want to do for the next episode, Ethan? Uh, I'm down to do the scene like Jesus Revolution and then talking about that. The faith films? Just like talk about faith films. Yeah, I'd be so down. We, uh, can, talk about, uh, uh, we can talk about American Do- Underdog as well, just Jesus Revolution. And The Chosen. I also need to see that movie. That's TV series. TV series. I need to watch yeah, that entire TV series. Three just wrapped up. It's really good. Yeah, I would love to. Maybe we can get somebody a biblical major on. Yeah. Get somebody on for that episode and chat it up about that. Hopefully, we can get the headsets working next week. Yeah. W- we've been talking, and we have no idea how, how loud we actually are. So if this is a audio mess, I'm very sorry. Apologize. Um, it's it's my fault. I'll take responsibility. Yeah, it's Micah's fault. <laughs> Always blame things on Micah if things are going <laughs> wrong in your life. <laughs> gas prices are going up that's my it's fault guys. that's on me my bad my b but yeah so we'll we'll talk about faith films next week it's going to be actually liddy in the city i'm sorry and i feel it. like a lot of more people a lot more people are going to be excited about that than dc, DC just because mm-hmm. dc and marvel are both pretty confusing but and nerd stuff but but jesus but <laughs> but jesus but god um yeah so that'll be fun that'll be an interesting little episode um so yeah thank you guys for listening um i'm sorry if this was all over the place that is we're still figuring out the kinks to this we literally sat here for 30 minutes trying to get this headset to work and it ended up both of us just not being able to do it so hopefully next week it'll be a little bit better on that and uh yeah we get episode next week <laughs>